If you know anything about Ted or I, you know we love fantastic gear. Sometimes it's very vintage, like the CP70 behind us. Today we're talking about a very loved Yamaha DGT7A, one of the coolest hybrids to ever exist. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. This is one that's near and dear to your heart. I told you about this piano before you ever saw one. I, I, and we have, you know, we have somewhat of a policy at our store when we're when we're uh, selling instruments and bringing in pianos and and selling pianos and you know the policy is usually if it's a digital piano that's older than X amount of years we're not really interested and so we kind of have this rule it's like you know most of the time just don't even say we're not interested in picking it up on consignment or even purchasing but yeah. I got a, a phone call from from the uh, you know our purchasing agent who was like hey I got a really interesting one for you and he called me he's like have you ever heard of a Yamaha DGT seven A and I was like. Me and Ted were just talking about this. And so, you know, this is, you know, it's, I think, what laid the groundwork for a lot of hybrid instruments that we see today. And tell, tell your story about what, where this piano was, was in your life. This piano uh, is about 25-year-old model, just roughly. You can and find a New York Times article in 98. We just looked it up before we shot this When it was brand video. new. And they're yeah. like, you know, fawning over the technology. And if you read the specs, uh, you know, at, compared to today's computers, it's... I was thrilled when, it, when this instrument was announced. Of course, it was a Yamaha thing. They announce it, and you think you can go to the store and buy one, but that's six, seven months later, you know, because they always push that ad mm -hmm. to create that, that desire and that want. But what I was thrilled with at the time, because this was the time when I really first started playing a lot in piano bars, not so much in bands and in clubs, but just in piano bars because the dueling piano thing was real big, and so mm -hmm. then the solo piano thing was big, and then some combinations of those. And what was thrilling is that this instrument was, they have the DGT7, which is a GT7, a Grand Touch 7, with a disc levier attached to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the DGT7. That's the one that we're talking about today. But the instrument itself is just a player, uh, just a piano to be played, but this one has a player system in it. And when you look at it, it looks just like a baby grand piano. It looks exactly like a baby grand piano. And part of the marketing that Yamaha tried to insist that their dealers do is to display this piano in the room with all of their grand pianos mm -hmm. and leave it closed up. So if someone walking by would open it up and play a few notes and then be enticed to play some more and play some more. And when we first got it, that's how we displayed it. And that was the most attraction drawing piano in the recital hall. And we had both Yamaha and Baldwin nine footers and seven footers and all that. And they wanted you to plug it in kind of discreetly. You right? had to plug it in where people couldn't really see there was an outlet. So we hid the outlet with the leg and had the wire running down and, and plugged it in. And we had college professors, everyone, how much is that little Yamaha? Everyone wanted to know about that little grand piano over there because it, it plays and sounds perfect. I said, it's a digital. It's Yeah, and, and it wasn't a cheap digital either. So this no. is, you know, digital pianos yeah. usually, you know, they start off and they're fairly expensive, especially the history of digital pianos when something was new and exciting. They were usually pretty pricey, but this one was, you know, exceptionally pricey, especially for the time. It was just a couple thousand dollars less than a real grand piano of the same size and stature. So at that of, a, time. of a disc levier player piano. Of a disc levier. Because I, I saw piano. price tag was close to the retail price was close to about eighteen thousand. Correct. Um, on a you know on this fully digital instrument, so I think people weren't used to that seeing that price, but they also weren't used to seeing a, a grand piano that had the functionality. Correct, but here's the thing. This is what made this piano catch a lot of people off guard. At the time, like I said, I was just starting to play in piano bars. A lot of piano bars would have some 50-year-old wooden piano stripped and gutted with a digital laying on top. So it looked cool from outside, but when you went up to play on it, it's like, this is just a keyboard sitting in a shell. Mm -hmm. And that was, eventually someone started making just shells to sell like that and I never liked the way they look because I never I, you, you could tell obviously it's not a real grand piano mm -hmm. it's got the look but it's not really it this one here was really it and it had the look but it wasn't it was a digital piano and it's the first time 
to my knowledge, that Yamaha put a grand piano sample with a grand piano action inside a grand piano case, but put no grand piano in it. It's the only time, and it still might be the only time they do that. Well, the N3. But okay. that's not a full baby grand it's size. It's not a full it's, baby it's, grand it's... size. This was a full four foot, 11 and a half inch grand piano side mm -hmm. that without the steel frame, without the soundboard, and it just had a speaker configuration in there that they covered up with a grill cloth. And it's got a player system on it. And this one has a player system on it. And it, I think this one is, I, I didn't really double check if it's the Mark III or the Mark II XG, mm -hmm. but around this time, this, this instrument had different disc levier models attached to it based on what year, because the disc levier got updated during this instrument's life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while it had its run from around 06 to, from 98 to about 06, the disc levier models changed. I think it went from the 2XG to the Mark III. But something I haven't seen on disc levers, and I don't know if back then they had it, but that voice button. Yeah, the voice button, what, what they did is what the, the advantage of the XG was to take the piano disc levier playing system and add more to it than just the piano. Okay. So they added uh, a sound card to the unit, which is what you're hearing, the XG, and uh, some of them have the expanded XG sound card in it, but it was also MIDI capable. So you can also run MIDI cables out of this thing in and out, but it also drives the synthesizer. It's a digital that's built mm -hmm. in there with preset sounds. So now, I did not demo those sounds mm -hmm. because uh, they're actually the older sounding sounds and the Clavinovas for the last 20 years have had better sound. Oh yeah, it. of course. But, uh, it has MIDI capability though, so you could, it you, does could run in, capability. you could run in some of the better, newer sounds. And what's also nice about this one is this, this disc levier now uh, has what's what they now only include in their pro unit, which is you can record on it. And I demoed the record feature on this one. And it works just like a cassette deck. You okay. can play and record and, 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 and it records. And let's, let's take a listen to it then. This is the Yamaha DGT7A, really a, a unique, rich piece of history with hybrid instruments, especially with Yamaha. Uh, one that, you know, it's kind of a shame they don't make it anymore. It is uh, because there still is a need for this type of instrument. Maybe not as expensive as the N3, but one that looks like a piano. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why I got excited about it 25 years ago, I never said, is I had a lot of customers that were music venues. They were uh, piano bars, uh, or they were some type of lounge or, um, a hotel lobby where they wanted to have like a perfect looking piano just playing all the time at a low volume. This was perfect for that. And again, I mentioned this is in between disc leviers. The XG sounds were not really that controllable mm -hmm. for the piano sounds on a disc, uh, disc levier. They couldn't get it to blend real good. So they came out with the CD player mm -hmm. that had the program on one side and then it had actually recorded music with vocals on the other on side. The so that was the marrying of all those technologies at its initial point around 25 years ago for disc mm -hmm. And so now when you get the Inspire, it's got everything in it. Mm -hmm. And it's all just in a box. There's no, it, it's just USB connections and MIDI. I don't that's think it has the XG voices or anything though. No, I, no, they so have, it's, just it's purely all, acoustic. Pure, it's a purely. So acoustic. let's take a listen to the DGT7A. We'll come back and talk about what was the downside about this instrument? I'll tell you when we come back.
Okay, Patrick, I think that we had recorded this a couple of different ways, and a lot of times people want us to talk about how was this recorded, all right? So um, just in general, without giving all the details, because I think they're going to put it up there on the mm -hmm. post when they do it, we had one uh, recorded directly off uh, the channel. Out of the box, yeah. Out of the box. Then we had uh, one recorded uh, directly off the microphone that you see in there. And then we had another that was the piano playing itself recorded off of the microphone. Yeah, That's so we can, we you can kind of get a, a feel of how it sounds like coming out of the box. And, and sitting in the room playing with it, uh, it sounds incredible. You know, it, it's, it does, but you had asked me, I said, we'll talk about the downside when well, we come back. Well, and, and, and you know, leading into that, I think it's interesting to see if you bought a brand new, just their entry, you know, back then it was the G1 or the GH1. Um, or the G GB1, GB1 or even was was coming around at that time. Uh, if you would have bought one of those back then, you know you probably were spending seven or eight thousand dollars on the entry line baby grand Yamaha. Um, and uh, if you bought this, you know you're spending a little bit more. And then you see the today's market value of this. It says you know it's it's more than halved from the retail price. Whereas you look at the GB1 or the GH1 or the G1, they've actually kind of increased or held their value at probably Ooh. what you would have paid for it. Back in the day, I mean, you know, we have G1s in here. They're really in good condition. They're selling for ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars if they're if they're in really pristine condition. So you you look at the trade off of you know we've talked about this in videos, but digital technology and and so kind of the downside is what? Oh, the downside is there's two things, and then I want to go back and pick up a little bit of slack on those downsides. Downside was this, and you didn't notice it at the time because the sample on this piano is really really a great pristine sample. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a stereo sample, and it is of their nine-foot concert grant at the time, which was the CF3S. Mm -hmm. And that piano is like two generations back in terms of yeah. since they've upgraded the piano. And the downside is that it had 32-note polyphony, but it was 32-note stereo. Mm -hmm. So that's the equivalent of having like 64-note polyphony. Which is still very low on the which spectrum. Which is still very low on the spectrum by today's standards. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago... That from was, an instrument that looked like that, it was convincing. Because after, you know, a couple of days and a couple of gigs using this instrument, you realize I can't really overplay because there'll be dropout and the parts will sound simpler. And since you're in a club and there's live music, it always sounds better the less you do. Mm -hmm. So that was going for it. That was the one thing, the downside is that it had this 32-note polyphony in it mm -hmm. and that it did have an older sample in it. And now since those two things, uh, the one thing I can say is up until two years ago, the last one of these units that I knew was available in the downtown area and being presented in a hotel lobby was right down the street on the other side of Main Plaza, across from the courthouse, and they had one that I sold about 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. They bought it secondhand from the store and put it in their lobby. It's still over there. It was still playing and sounding Perfect. So what yeah. I'm saying is that it even though it's purpose, 25, yeah. it serves its purpose. A kid could still get that thing. A guy could still get that thing and play on it and learn. I think it could still put one in a club. That one would be great. In a I, I think it's still a great value proposition at the price that they're selling for now. It, it really is. And the other thing, that the real advantage to it is that I had a personal experience from inviting all the players from uh, piano bars around from Houston, Austin, and Dallas, and even Corpus. And it, Almost everyone comes through San Antonio for a side gig or a gig or a vacation. They come in at a club and they just could not believe how great those pianos sounded. Yeah. And, and how great they played and how well they looked. And they said, this is the best well, and so, club you know, I've it's, ever it's been It's hindsight in. is 2020. It, it is. And, and it's by today's standards, you'd want something that was like that. You know, it, 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 at the time, it was probably, hey, this has a real action. You know, that's never going to go away. It's got a great sound system in it. That's right. never going to go away. A great sample. You know the the the, the electronics are solid. You know right. you don't see any electronics. From the other Yamaha. thing I wanted to mention about this unit is they did make a smaller costing unit, and the it two? was the GT2. Mm -hmm. The same guts and the same brains, a smaller sound system and a smaller invented mini grand case that looks like a shapely desk. Mm -hmm. And I never really. It opened up and you could put a stick in it, but we sold more of those than we did the GT7s. Price probably. Price and a lot of retail stores would buy these. They try to discount the price as much as possible and put them in their store and sell them at MSRP. The, the, and we had a dealer here in town that bought more of these things and they sold it in their retail, their ups, 
upscale retail store mm-hmm. at MSRP, and we were, you know, selling. But he always moved them. I think he moved about eight or nine of those things. Very cool. Yeah. Um, but you know, in, in today's standard, you want Bluetooth with it. You'd want all these things, and so you know, it's hard to, to compare today with with. You kind of get a rustic feeling when you're pushing those buttons uh-huh. and stuff like that to get it to work, and it does have an older remote. And so, and so, you know, it's just I think it's one of those very cool pieces of history that um, it's nice that we were able to do a video on it and uh, hopefully preserve a little bit of its history. It's a perfect piano because it never has to be tuned. And yeah. It always sounds like that. And being able to record on it in playback and the keys are moving—that's something you don't see on digital pianos. They don't—they no. just don't do that. No. The N3X, you can spend what sixteen, eighteen thousand dollars. It doesn't play. It doesn't come back and play, and that's something that a lot of people want. You know, like I, the you know the CLP seven sixty five GP from from Yamaha, their entry line digital baby grant. People would, you know, they're always like, oh, do the keys move when you record? Because you say, oh, there's a record button on it. Do the keys come back and move? Oh, no, just the, the, the right. sound samples and plays back. So there is a lot of cool technology in this instrument, and I think it's probably an undervalued uh, used instrument. You know, even with the, th- the 64 note polyphony and even with the old sample, you know, now it would come with a CFX sample or a Bosendorfer sam- sample. Um, with, even with those things in consideration, I feel like it's still you're getting the action of, of a piano. And so that you can't put a price tag on that because mm-hmm. it's, I mean, you can, but but it, it's it's the biggest knack people have against digital pianos. Boom, knocks it out right, right there. And then being able to record and create, you know, whether it's you, you or a student going and listening and playing back really just opens up, you know, what the possibility of music right. can be. Um, and so just a really cool instrument, uh, you know, preserved in history. And here it is, the TGT-7A. So Anything else to add about it? Now, other than it's a great showpiece, you know, particularly for a venue of some sort, it, it looks just like a regular yeah. piano. Yeah, no, and, and yeah, the, the, the more modern day equivalents are smaller, more compact, and they say, okay, that's what people want when they're buying these. And right. I think that's unfair to, to, to put it in a box, but, you know, they have to and ship it off. Um, well, if you've owned a DGT-7A or if you've played one, if you were, you know, performing with one back in the early 2000s, late 90s, um, please leave comments. This was a really kind of incredible instrument of its time. I think there's articles about the Backstreet Boys taking them on tour. I'm sure Elton John even considered taking one if, you know, when he was a Yamaha artist. It's just, it's... If you ever played one, please leave comments. Let us know your experience. Let others know your experience. It is just a cool piece of history. Um, like the electric pianos of, of the past, it's, it's one of those things where... It may never have Catch this. Again, yeah, right? it may yeah. never have that same impact that it did back in the day. And there's, you know, substitutes today that that will say that they replace it. And um, and so it's just, it is what it is. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Please subscribe to our, our video, our you know, our channel. channel, not our videos. Subscribe to our, our uh, channel if you want to see more great content, and we will make sure we keep making it for you.